Hi, I'm Sophie. I'm the COO and co-founder of Disposal and I'm here to talk to you about rubbish. So rubbish, recycling, trash, junk, garbage, refuse, whatever it is that you call it, it's something that we all create and it's a global problem. Images of the Pacific garbage patch, beaches strewn with plastic pollution, albatross stomachs full of litter, all these images are all too common now. <clears throat> And one in three people around the world don't have access to proper waste management. Having to dump or burn their waste with all the environmental and health risks and hazards that come with that. And though it's often overlooked, when attempting to address the climate emergency, better resource management can have a significant impact on our carbon footprint. Here in the UK, we have a pretty efficient system for taking away our waste, so we're not having to burn it or dump it at the edge of town. Um, <clears throat> but we, we have an enormous issue with littering and with waste crime. So that's not a term that everyone knows, uh, but basically it covers a whole host of illegal activities um, related to waste. So the obvious ones are things, what we call fly tipping here in the UK um, or illegal dumping, uh, but also uh, misclassification and fraud, entirely illegal waste sites, illegal burning and illegal exports. The waste industry is opaque, and although it's something that we all interact with in one way or another, it, it's, it's one that very few people understand. And, and the cost of disposal of items is never factored into the cost of what we pay for it. There's also little to no consistency to do with waste and recycling across different, you know, across a nation, let alone globally, which means a lot of us are utterly confused by what we're meant to do, especially as we're often expected to do like one thing at home, another thing at work, and yet another thing when we visit family or go on holiday. So I know it's a cliche, but our waste system is broken. And given that our society, our economy, <clears throat> has been overtaken by a desire for convenience and consumption, that's a problem because so much stuff now is designed to be disposable. In the sense that when you bin it, <clears throat> you, well, you, you just bin it when you're done with it. And we've been making and chucking away more and more stuff. And most people don't give a lot of thought to what happens to what they put in the bin. And, and research shows that in the UK, at least, many people also assume that once it's collected from them, it's no longer their responsibility. And... For us here in the UK, that is true of municipal waste. So the waste that you have um, collected by councils from your home. Um, but it's not true of business waste and it's not true of waste that isn't collected by your council. Uh, so for here, that would be things like if you cleared out your attic or you needed to get rid of your old fridge. <clears throat> so when we ask people, most people seem to think that the journey of their stuff is really simple. And that's what this slide's about. It, they think that... Once it goes in the bin, the journey of it is about as linear as our take, make, use, dispose economy. So it gets picked up by a bin truck and it gets taken to a waste site where it's either recycled, landfilled or burnt. So that's the sort of image that they have. Actually, the waste supply chain <laughs> looks more like this. It, it's a complex web of interwoven waste companies which span the globe. And as far as UK legislation goes, you're responsible for your waste until it reaches its end destination. But keeping track of that and, and trying to make sure it doesn't end up in the wrong hands is super complicated. It's really time consuming. And honestly, it's virtually impossible with the way things are currently. Part of the problem, as I mentioned, is the very low levels of awareness around waste. So we commissioned a survey by YouGov in Greater Manchester, which showed that 49% of adults didn't know that waste removal services needed to be licensed. And in a study by the Right Waste, Right Place campaign, even businesses were unaware of their duty of care, with 48% of them not knowing where their waste goes once it leaves their premises. So it is really easy for criminals to take advantage and it's remarkable to me that despite waste being something that everyone and every business deals with, that there's no coordinated national messaging about what your responsibility is and how you should meet that responsibility. I mean, the absolute consistent uh, lack of consistency, sorry, or standardisation also doesn't help. And 
this covers both no consistency in what you're meant to do, but also there's very little consistency in terms of approach by the regulator uh, to enforcement like around the country. And we have no standards around data to do with waste. So, so we actually have no accurate data on waste in the UK. So it's super hard to evaluate whether any particular campaign or effort or measure is having an effect, having the effect that we want. And part of the issue with this lack of data is that the industry is really behind when it comes to tech and digitalization. So necessary tasks that should be simple end up like super convoluted and tiresome. And I'm going to talk you through an example now, that email here. So um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much.